Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I want to wish everyone happy holidays. And in this video, I want to address a topic that I kind of started talking about in another video that received really great response. And so I figured since it's application season, recruitment season, that it's a great time to readdress this issue. And that might help someone who's applying to medical school right now and also is on the interview trail from your house. Um, <laughs> in this video, I want to address the non-traditional applicant who is applying to medical school as a second career. Stay tuned. So thank you guys for staying tuned to my channel. I've been taking some breaks here and there, working on some other projects that I will probably at a later time talk to you guys about. I'm very excited about. But I wanted to kind of get back into the mode of videos and most specifically talk to applicants who are currently interviewing or pursuing medicine as a second career and might be going through the application season right at this moment. Currently we are in recruitment and working on interviewing many applicants that are coming in for residency. And so that got me thinking about the uh, non-traditional applicant, the person who has had experience in the past outside of medicine, who has basically established a life before pursuing medicine, and the person who is considering switching gears and going into that path, and especially those who are considering going into medical school right now. So one thing I wanted to point out that would be helpful to applicants who are in this boat is that you want to really market yourself as someone who has experienced the real world. We find that to be very intriguing and we also consider that as something that is a positive on your side. As you may know or as you may have heard from previous videos that I've made and just from other exposures, you know, all of the rungs that you have to go through to get through to your goal in medicine and there's so many steps to the process of becoming a physician that require your complete commitment and focus. So as someone who has already experienced life, has already worked a full-time job, or even has a family, we consider you someone who is mature, who has experienced a lot, and someone who can draw upon their past experiences to help them through all of those steps in the process. So the things that really make you marketable as someone who's coming into medicine after experiencing another path, for example, a lot of our applicants come from other fields that are medically related. We have a lot of EMTs or emergency medical technicians. We have people who have been in nursing, people who have been out side of medicine as well. People who have been teachers in the past, like myself. People who have done other jobs in many other unrelated areas to medicine. Engineers, bankers, investment bankers. People who have come from all different areas of the spectrum um, as far as professional lives. So when you decide to enter medicine, it shows that you are passionate about this field because knowing what you know about becoming a physician, giving up the established life that you had already really speaks volumes. And that's something, again, that the admissions committees really look highly upon. I know myself personally, when I'm reviewing an application for residency in anesthesia, I'm always very intrigued by someone who had another life experience and I want to know more about it and I want to know what was their turning point where they decided that you know this wasn't what they really aspired to and that they wanted to pursue medicine instead so on your interview day you really do want to portray that story what made you decide to change your gears what made you come into medicine after let's say a year or two or even more so of course you want to make sure that your motivations are sure and your motivations are really genuine are you switching gears and pursuing this field because you're motivated to make more money are you doing it for the prestige um, those are things that won't help you through the night when you're studying or won't help you through a really challenging call and as you move along your path of training that will become very clear and actually might hurt you. So I want you to think very sincerely about your motivations for pursuing medicine and really be convinced and sure that this is what you want. Some things that we're looking for 
in applicants when they are coming in as non-traditional, other than their motivation for pursuing medicine, is whether or not they will have the time and the capacity to meet the demands of study. As you know, this is a field that requires many hours of study. So if you're a person like me who already had the workings of her family going on by the time she entered residency, you would have to examine your family structure and your life structure to figure out whether or not you're able to provide yourself with that balance. Balance. Are you able to budget enough time to really commit yourself to your studies and for preparation for exams and just for day-to-day -day demands from work? A lot of times you're going to be taking call and you're going to be out at the hospital late. So are you able to make provisions for childcare? Are you able to make provisions for basically managing your household? Other than that, you want to really consider all of those things when you're deciding whether or not medicine is right for you. For me, it was so essential that I had a support network and that support network included my mother and my husband. And between the two of them, I don't think I would have made it through medical school or a residency for sure without them. So you really do need some type of structure that will provide you support as you're going through this really challenging time. So while you're on the interview trail, it's important for you to emphasize that and kind of portray that you have the ability to balance and also point out to them that those factors in your life that exist that would support you through challenging times. So things that I want to give you as tips for applicants and people who are looking into medicine as a second career, really, really focus yourself on researching the programs that you're interested in applying to. Is this location going to work for you as far as maybe an established your established lifestyle? Would you be able to uproot and move to whatever school or program accepts you? That's something that I had to look at closely in my personal life when I was deciding on going to medical school. And I applied to a school in Nashville, Meharry, and I got in. This was a tough time for me because I grew up in New York. My whole life was in New York. My family was in New York. I was already established. That was something that I was asked on my interview day. You know, we know that you're from New York. Really going to work out for you if you had to move to Nashville. How would you structure that with your family? Even if you are a traditional applicant that's just applying to a school outside of your home state, this is something that will be asked of you on interview day. And you really have to kind of be ready for that question and demonstrate what are some of the things that you're going to do if you had to leave and how would you be able to establish a support network or kind of reassure the admission committee that you would be committed to going to the school that's far away from home. So one of the other major pros for a non-traditional applicant, one of the things that makes you marketable is your maturity. You're someone who has lived and you know what's out there in the world. You're someone who understands the demands of a job, a real life experience in a professional space perhaps. You're someone who would understand the rigors of performing as a resident with that same type of demand. It's a job. It's a job where you're learning on the job. So you're training every day. However, you do have to come to work every day. You have to figure out how to balance the requirements of your job with the outside requirements that you have and needs that you have in your home. In that regard, someone who's a non-traditional applicant coming in with that level of experience and maturity really does show a positive in the eyes of the admissions committee. So we're looking for applicants that will be able to rise to the challenge, and because you have that experience in your back pocket, it really does prepare you. So that being said, maturity also comes with being older. And so being older than your classmates can be a bit intimidating, trust me. So knowing that your classmates are younger, they probably have more time to focus on studies. They probably don't have a whole lot of responsibilities outside of that. Can really negatively affect your psyche. You might be entering medical school at the age 30, 35, or 40. Most of the traditional applicants that are going straight through are coming in at around age 21 or 22. And so you may feel a little bit intimidated. You might feel that your age is against you, but it's not. You're gonna be just fine. 
as long as you're focused and you're committed to putting in your all into your studies, you gotta be able to do just as well as everyone else. And the more you put into it, the more you're gonna get out of it. So it's all about you and your level of commitment and how much you're willing to work towards this goal that you're really passionate about. I wanna encourage you guys, anyone who's out here applying on a different path than is traditionally seen, we know that you're doing this because you're committed to the field and you have to be passionate in order for you to want to start anew with this new rigorous lifestyle. I've seen my share of applicants who have come in, um, they're applying for residency and they've done other careers. They've done so many other things in their life, so many different experiences. They've been in the military, they've had other career paths. They're older and frankly, I see that as all positive things. Just more encouragement of their motivation to pursue medicine and anesthesia. So as a non-traditional applicant and someone who has other demands in their lives, maybe you already own a home or you have kids to take care of. So you might be worried about the money that you're gonna have to take out in loans to make it through medical school. You're gonna need money to live off of during this time as you're not gonna be able to work and you're gonna have to pay your bills as well during this time. Those are some things that you do have to think about when you're making this really important decision and I want to encourage you to check out my other video where I talked about how I was able to balance my bills that I had before medical school and pay them while I was still studying so this was a major concern for me and something that probably was going to be a deciding factor as to whether or not I went into medicine was I going to be able to afford it that's going to be a challenge for everyone or most people and I want to encourage you to not let that hold you back from the passion that you have for this career there are so many ways to work it out and as you know even those people who are non-traditional going into medical school probably will be funding their medical career with 100% student loans so this is a portion of the challenge that you're going to face of course so I want you to keep in mind your commitment to becoming a doctor and the fulfillment that it will ultimately bring you. I think these are all really beneficial attributes and things that can totally help you get in. So with that, I thank you guys so much again for watching. Happy holidays, everyone. We're look all looking forward to 2021 being a better year than this. And I hope to see you guys there. Take care.